On the front fuselage of the aircraft, there are three angle of attack AOA probes. Three plus three captain, first officer and standby static ports. Three Pratout probes and two total air temperature TAT probes. Other navigation antennas are located on the lower center fuselage. For normal operation, after AC power has been connected to the aircraft, we make sure that the ADR and IR push buttons are in their normal lights out position. Then we select nav on the three IR mode selectors. The alignment process has now started. The on bat light illuminates amber for a few seconds as a test of the battery circuit. Almost immediately, air data information is shown on both. This message tells you that the alignment process has begun. It takes approximates for a full alignment, but the AKM will only count down from 7 minutes. After approximately 30 seconds, attitude information is displayed on both PFDs. You will have, first, to enter a company route number or a city pair ICAO codes for city of origin and destination in the init A page of the MCDU. When the GPS is available, the position initialization is automatic. The GPS position will be used by the IRS without pilot intervention. You will have nevertheless to verify the alignment is correct. You access the IRS init page by pressing the IRS init key. The latitude and longitude shown in this page are normally those of the departure airport's reference point, coming from the database. Then, you cross-check this position against the position of the IRS, when in NAV mode, on the IRS pages, accessed via the data IRS monitor page. If the GPS position is not available, you will have to initialize manually the ADERS by pressing the Align IRS prompt. This sends the coordinates displayed on the IRS init page to the three ADERS. If flying long segment in poor radio navade coverage airspace, it is better to use the gate coordinates to initialize the ADERS to insert these coordinates, slew them on the IRS init page and then, press the Align IRS prompt. This increases the accuracy of the ADERS position computation. The IRS in Align message on the engine warning display counts down the time remaining until full alignment is completed. We have speeded up this countdown for you.
Once IRS alignment is complete, all PFD and ND information is available. The IRS in a line message disappears from the engine warning display memo. For the remainder of a normal flight, no further pilot input is required on the ADER system. Occasionally, during a turnaround, a residual ground speed can necessitate an IRS rapid realignment. This information is accessed through the IRS monitor page. The data index page has already been called up on the MCDU. Selecting one of the IRS, give access to its specific page. From this page, you can check the residual ground speed of IRS 1, then access the other IRS's To carry out a rapid alignment, all three mode selectors have to be switched off, then on, within 5 seconds. The adders will take approximately 3 minutes to realign to the position entered into the MCDU. We are now in flight. Let's talk about navigation accuracy. The indication, never occur upgrade, has appeared at the bottom of the MD and in the MCDU scratch pad, meaning that the navigation accuracy level has automatically switched from low to high. We will see now how to perform a navigation accuracy check. The objective of the navigation accuracy check is to compare the raw data from the tuned nav aids with the corresponding FM computed data. If your aircraft is equipped with GPS primary, no accuracy check is required as long as GPS primary is available. The GPS mode can be checked on the progress page. If the GPS is no longer primary, the message, GPS primary lost, is displayed on the MD and in the MCDU scratch pad. Notice that the navigation accuracy level stays at high. Nevertheless, the navigation accuracy has to be verified. This check has to be performed whenever the following cases occur. IRS-only navigation 
the progress page displays low accuracy and never occur downgrade message appears on the MCDU and on the MD. To perform this check, you have to use the selected nav aids and display them on the ND. We have set the ND range to 80. The VOR, Sierra, Papa, Romeo has been manually tuned on receiver 1 and the VOR, Papa, Alpha, Sierra on receiver 2. Note that the VOR, Papa, Alpha, Sierra is the two waypoint of the flight plan. There are two ways to do this check. The first method is to compare the TO waypoint distance and bearing which is FM computer data with the corresponding Nevade DME distance and bearing. We have called the progress page. The second method is to insert a VORDME ident in the bearing and distance TO field on the progress page and to compare the computed bearing and distance with the raw data on the MD. We have typed the VORDME ident SPR in the scratch pad for you. We will insert it in bearing and distance by pressing the LSK4R. We now have on the progress page the computed bearing and distance to the selected nav aid. The distances shown on the ND and on the progress page can be compared. The last method consists in checking that the raw data needle passes through the blue FMGS generated symbol for the VORDME and that the position of this symbol corresponds to the DME distance. Whatever method is used, if the error is less than 3 nautical miles, the check is positive, and the FM position is reliable. The standard operating procedure recommends to use the ND in ARC or NEV mode and manage lateral guidance. 
If the error is greater than 3 nautical miles, you can consider that the FM position is not reliable. In such a case, the standard operating procedure recommends to use raw data for navigation and to monitor it. Nevertheless, you can update the FMS position via the update at field by entering the ident of a waypoint, a navade, an airport, a latitude, longitude, a place bearing distance, or a place bearing place bearing. MCDU will request to confirm the update. You will do it when the aircraft overflies the inserted position. You must be sure of your position before updating the FMS position and so, sliving the map. Let's see what happens when approaching the polar region. At high latitude, or, when entering the North Magnetic Polar Region, the Adiras replace magnetic heading, by true heading, on EFIS and DDRMI. When approaching the Polar Region, the Adiru triggers a message, on the MCDU and ND, requesting to change the North Reference. When TRUE is selected, TRUE heading is displayed on the instruments. The heading value has changed and a TRUE label is displayed above the heading scale on the PFD and ND. In addition, on the ND, a grid track is displayed and the VOR needles have changed to magenta. The correction indication near the VOR identifier indicates that the VOR data is corrected by the FM. Here, the aircraft is true referenced and the VOR is magnetically referenced. On the MCDU, the bearing or track for each waypoint has also changed to true as indicated by a T letter near each